As National Security Advisor and now Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice is one of the chief architects of American foreign policy, a foreign policy as bold and far-reaching as any in recent times. She's become the central figure at the president's side in defending the war in Iraq and the war on terror, and she's not just towing the line. Condi Rice is a true believer. What we learned in a series of interviews is that this smart, tough, deeply religious woman sees the struggle against the enemies of the United States as a fight of good versus evil, a lot like the struggle she experienced as a child growing up in segregated Birmingham, Alabama. I probably have, um, at one level, a better understanding, or, or perhaps, let me say, a more personal understanding of what the dark side of human beings can look like. Um, I remember very well in 1963 when Birmingham was so violent, when it acquired the name Bombingham, uh, that even with my wonderfully protective family, you had to wonder, why are they doing this uh, to us? And on the other hand, I have a great faith in the ability of people to triumph over the dark side of, of human beings. And so when I look around the world and I hear people say, well, you know, they're just not ready for democracy, it really does resonate or I hear echoes of, well, you know, blacks are kind of childlike. Uh, they really can't handle the vote or they really can't take care of themselves. Um, it, it really does roil me. It makes me so angry because I think there are those echoes of what people once thought about black Americans. It's the same argument she uses to defend the difficult war in Iraq and the Bush administration's goal of spreading democracy around the world. You're such a true believer, Secretary Rice. Do you ever doubt yourself or your ideology? I just believe in the power of these values. And I know how tough it is, and I know what Americans see on their, on their screens. But in all great times of testing, in all great times of challenge, there are doubts. And these challenges are going to be overcome. She is said to be closer to the president than any secretary of state in more than 50 years and is legendary for her loyalty. All right. When Mr. Bush appeared on the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln and the message was, mission accomplished in Iraq, Condi Rice was there, ever the loyal soldier. You used your credibility to rally the American people behind this. Now it turns out there were no weapons of mass destruction. Do you regret using that? I don't regret at all overthrowing Saddam Hussein. But that's not am the question. I, well, I, do I wish the intelligence had been better? Absolutely. I've wished every day since we learned. The idea that somehow, uh, because the intelligence was wrong, we were misleading the American people, I really resent that. Really? Because really that's what it. so many people no, think. I resent it. Because the administration was using the best available intelligence, and so Everybody thought that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. He'd used them, for goodness sakes. You have conceded that lots of mistakes have been made in Iraq. Vice President Cheney says if he had to do it again, he'd do it the same way. Do you agree? Well, I would certainly do it again. But and do it the same way. Well, it, you, uh, nobody can go back and, um, and reinvent the past. We can't do it, Katie. But you can learn from your mistakes. I'm enough of an historian to know the things that look like brilliant policies at the time turn out to have been really stupid. And things that looked like mistakes at the time turn out to have been brilliant policies. I'll let history judge those things. In the time we spent with the secretary, this was one of the few moments we found her alone. She works out six days a week starting at 5 a.m., often to the music of Led Zeppelin or Cream. But this is the music that really moves her. As often as she can, she gathers a group of four friends for an afternoon of Schumann or Brahms. And no surprise, every piece is followed by a debriefing. Yeah. Okay, uh, what did you think? 
I thought it was hectic, actually. Yeah. <laughs> a little sluggish, if anything. How often are you able to get together to play? We Depends were on the world situation. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we play the recapitulation? Sure. All right. It's hard to imagine my life without music. Um, I certainly find it as a way to completely transport into another world. I've been asked, uh, you know, is it relaxing? And I say, well, it's not exactly relaxing struggling with Brahms, but it is transporting. You're just in another world. Life is much fuller when I've got my music. Good morning. Life is very full for this 51-year-old overachiever, a woman who graduated from college Phi Beta Kappa at 19. She's treated like a rock star, and everything from her sense of style to her possible suitors is the subject of endless gossip. Esquire readers voted her the woman they'd most like to take to dinner. Is it hard for you to have a social life? It must be impossible. First of all, when do you find the time? Yeah. Second of all, how does one go about asking the Secretary of State out on a date? <laughs> Hi, Madam Secretary, listen. Well, I won't even go there on the second question, but I've, I've got great friends and people that I see. Would you like to get married one day? Oh, wouldn't we all love to find somebody that you'd want to live the rest of your life with? Sure. But I've never thought you wanted to get married in the abstract. You, you want to get married to someone. And so um, I've just never particularly want to get married to someone. But who knows, maybe one of these days. But these days, she's consumed by waging war and promoting democracy. And when she defends her position, this former Stanford professor can at times sound like she's lecturing a class. I'm a true believer in the process of democratization as a way to overcome old wounds. And I believe that if we don't do that, then people who've had their differences, people who've resolved their differences by violence or by repression are never going to find a way to live peacefully together. Is it really priority number one in terms of philosophically and pragmatically for the United States to be spreading democracy around the world? Well, first of all, the United States is not spreading democracy. The United States is standing with those who want a democratic future. And the future is what she focuses on. A passionate student of history, Condi Rice believes turmoil often precedes periods of peace and stability. And she rejects the notion that the U.S. is a bully, imposing its values on the world. What's wrong with assistance so that people can have their full and complete uh, right to the very liberties and freedoms that we enjoy. To quote my daughter, who made us the boss of them? Well, it's not a matter of being the boss of them. It's speaking for people who are voiceless. You have said that your goal was, quote, to leave the world not just safer, but better. Right now, Iraq doesn't seem safer. Iran and North Korea have not fallen into line. Do you honestly believe that the world is safer now? The world is safer because we're finally confronting these terrorists. We're finally confronting this challenge. And so I think we are safer. We're not yet safe. And I know that I'm not going to see the final outcome of the Middle East that we describe as democratic and prosperous and, and in that way truly stable. But all that I can do on my watch is to try to lay a foundation so that that will become the Middle East of the future. And I think we've done a great deal to, uh, to begin to lay that foundation.